Welcome back to Ballistic. So today, we are diving into the topic of guns that just ain't worth the price tag. I mean, we put a bunch of firearms through the ringer on this channel. Now, let us clear something up right off the bat. We're not here to trash any companies. No way. We're all about looking out for you, the hard-working folks who want to spend your money wisely. Now, nobody wants to drop their hard-earned cash on something that turns out to be a dud, right? And hey, if you've had a different experience with these firearms, don't hesitate to drop your thoughts down in the comments below. Alright, let's get into the nitty-gritty. To make it onto this list, these guns got to hit you in the wallet for over a grand, and they've got to show some serious shortcomings. Now, let's jump into it. Number 5, CZ Custom A01. Coming in at number 5, we've got the CZ Custom A01. And let me tell you, this one stings a bit. Because it's from a company I absolutely love. And they usually hit the mark. This here's the CZ Custom A01. Now, a friend of mine sent me his for a review and I was genuinely hyped. Because it was hyped up as the next big thing. Now, if you're like me, always chasing that competitive edge, trying to buy a smidge more skill, you get it. At the time, I was all about the Shadow 2, looking for that upgrade. The CZ801 is basically a Shadow 2, born from the ground up by CZ Custom, not your standard CZ fare. It's got an eye-watering MSRP of $2,700, over twice the cost of a standard Shadow 2. But does it deliver double the bang for the buck? Well, it... It wouldn't be on this list if it did. The A01 unfortunately had its reliability hiccups, cuffing up a couple of failures every 100 rounds or so. And it didn't shoot any more precisely than my trusty Shadow 2. Considering the hefty price tag, I was expecting double the accuracy, double the reliability, and have the recoil. Reality check? None of those were delivered. The Shadow 2 was already near perfect, and a sweet deal at around $1,200, making it arguably the best competition gun for your greenbacks. They just bulked up the A01 to soak up recoil, tightened it all up, but made it finicky and, frankly, too darn heavy. Pulling a 50 plus ounce beast out of your holster, trying to swing it around in transitions, and hoisting it all day ain't fun, especially when it doesn't even reduce recoil compared to the good old Shadow 2. Number 4, FN509 LS Edge. Coming in hot at number 4 on our list is the FN509 LS Edge, and boy does it have a reputation that's so complex. Now, let me clarify something right off the bat. This gun has its fans, however, my take on it is a tad different. The FN509 LS Edge is a firearm that seems to have missed the mark when it comes to carving out a distinct identity. You see, when gun manufacturers introduce a new firearm to the market, they typically have a clear vision of where it fits in the grand scheme of things. They might be aiming to create the ultimate concealed carry piece or a top-tier competition beast. The key here is that the features chosen for the gun should align with its intended purpose. For instance, if you're designing a competition gun, you'll likely include slide cuts for that cool factor, even though they might let in debris. You'll slap on a generously sized magwell because, in competitions, speed reloads are crucial. You also throw in a race-ready trigger and other features tailored to the competitive circuit. But the FN509 LS Edge is a bit of an enigma in this regard. It feels like a competition gun that somehow missed the memo about the trigger department. The trigger, to put it bluntly, leaves a lot to be desired. Now, here's the real head-scratcher, the price tag. You can find other guns on the market that offer better triggers and more appealing features at a fraction of the cost. Take for example the Walther PDP, which comes in at a wallet-friendly $500 and boasts a smoother trigger and a feature set that caters to both competition and carry. If you're willing to splurge a bit, the Heckler & Koch VP9 Long Slide, priced at around $800, offers a superb trigger and a comprehensive set of features. It sports a 5-inch barrel, an optics mounting system, a light rail, and more. But when you venture into the FN territory, you'll be shelling out a hefty $1,500 for a package that doesn't quite measure up to its competitors. 
Number three, Sig P210 Kiri. Landing in at the respectable third spot on our list is a firearm that, well, I had a soft spot for, but knew deep down it was fighting an uphill battle from day one. We're talking about the Sig Sauer P210 Kiri. Now, don't get me wrong, the P210 itself is a gun I adore, and if you're in the hated camp, well, you might need to reconsider your position. It's essentially the European cousin of the legendary 1911, a single-stack, precision-engineered target pistol that's known for its impressive accuracy. However, Sig Sauer decided to resurrect this classic as a carry model, and here's where the trouble begins. They seem to have forgotten that we're living in the 2020s, not the 1970s. The P210 carry lacked some essential features for modern concealed carry handguns. There's no rail for accessories, and it stubbornly remains a single stack, which means limited capacity by today's standards. And the absence of a red dot optic mount in an era when red dots are becoming the norm left many scratching their heads. All this, and Sig asked for a cool $1,400. It's safe to say they missed the mark with this one. I mean, let's be real here. If you're in the market for a single stack, 9mm pistol with a commander-sized frame, you're not exactly stranded on a deserted island with no options. You've got the tried-and-true 1911s readily available, and in the good old US of A, they're practically as common as apple pie. Heck, you can snag a Rock Island Armory 1911 that's just as reliable and accurate as the Sig P210 Kiri, and it'll only set you back around $550. It might not look as sleek, but it gets the job done. Now, if Sig Sauer really wanted to make waves in the carry pistol arena, they should have gone all in. A double stack design, a rail for accessories, and a red dot optic ready setup would have been the way to go. But it almost feels like they were placing bets on this being a flop from the start. Number 2, Angstad Arms MDP-9. Now, let's dive into the second spot on our list, and it's a no-brainer. The Angstad Arms MDP-9. So, what's the deal with the MDP-9? It's a 5-inch, 9mm pistol caliber carbine that aimed to take the throne from the iconic MP5. On paper, it sounds pretty promising. It's feather light at just 3.5 pounds, boasts a roller delayed system, and even has AR-style controls. But here's a kicker. It falls short when it comes to reliability and durability, especially when compared to the legendary MP5. From the get-go, this firearm experienced hiccups, and not just a few. We're talking problems cropping up within the first 50 rounds, including components breaking and parts taking an unscripted leap into the great unknown. Screws had a mind of their own, roll pins decided they'd had enough, and the malfunctions just never seemed to end. When you're shelling out a hefty $2,400 for a firearm designed for self-defense, these issues are simply unacceptable. To add insult to injury, there's a buffet of other 9mm pistol caliber carbines available in the same price range or even lower, and the MDP-9 doesn't exactly have a winning track record. Take the X-Star EP-9, for example, a budget-friendly option at a mere $300, and it's managed to prove its mettle with an impressive 2,000 rounds under its belt without breaking a sweat. And let's not forget the CMMG Banshee and the CZ Scorpion, both hovering around the $1,000 mark. These alternatives have garnered stellar reputations for their reliability and performance, making the MDP-9 seem like a questionable choice at best. Number 1, H&K SL-8. So, we've arrived at the top spot. Number 1, and naturally, we're saving the best, or in this case, the worst for last. The H&K SL-8. I currently own the H&K SL-8 and I recently took it out for a spin. Now, let me be clear, I absolutely adore this gun, but my love for it pretty much stops at its lux. The SL-8 has made appearances in various markets and it's essentially the civilian cousin of the H&K G36 although it had to undergo quite the makeover to comply with import laws in the 80s and 90s. As a result, they essentially chopped the gun in half, slapped on a 10-round single-stack magazine, which 
by the way, is a Herculean feat to load. Seriously, it's a workout. And created a semi-automatic rifle that's, well, far from rapid-fire friendly due to that measly 10-round mag. Let's talk ergonomics. They were a bit, well, stuck in the 80s, reminiscent of the Terminator era. It lacks the adjustability found in modern firearms, making it feel outdated. Converting it to something more versatile can be a real hassle, and it's missing many of the bells and whistles you'd expect from a firearm in its price range. Plus, the size-to-weight ratio is less than ideal, tipping the scales at 8.6 pounds with a 20-inch barrel, making it less than nimble. Now, we get to the price tag, a whopping $2,000. Sure, it's reliable, but it's seriously lacking in features compared to most other rifles in the same price range. If you're in the market for a serious self-defense weapon, there are much better options out there. Brands like Daniel Defense, BCM, etc. offer rifles with superior performance for a similar price. And if you're just looking for a basic home defense rifle, you can easily get into one for as low as $450, with options from Palmetto State Armory or Bear Creek Arsenal. 